Next question is, how do you feel about vegan YouTubers that promote high carb lifestyles and sell it as the best diet for all people? I post a post every week where I collect your questions on nutrition science and I do my best to answer as many as I can once a week here on YouTube. All right, you guys know the deal. You need to follow me on Instagram at Gage Girl Training. I post a post every week where I collect your questions on nutrition science and I do my best to answer as many as I can once a week here on YouTube. So let's get right on into it. So many questions. First question is, I'm counting macros and consistently training, but I'm not seeing progress in my physique. What should I do and what is the reason for this? So just because you are counting macros and working out, it does not mean that the macros that you picked for yourself are the correct macros. If that's the case, you need to reassess your protein, carbs, and fat. You need to reassess whether or not you are actually in a caloric deficit. And if you were not in a caloric deficit, or if you are, if you could just be not eating enough and your body would be in starvation mode, you could be eating too much and not seeing progress, or you could be too high in carbs, you could be too low in protein. It depends on how you are trying to do that. If you want your macros to be adjusted, I'd be happy to help you, but there's lots of online calculators, but if you would like it through the lens of what I would think, I'd be very happy to help you. Next question is, how do you feel about vegan YouTubers that promote high carb lifestyles and say, eat as much fruit as you want in one day and sell it as the best diet for all people. Here's what I have to say about that. I think that anytime somebody starts an exclusion diet, an exclusion diet might be something like Atkins back in the day, paleo is somewhat of an exclusion diet, but I know a lot of people do paleo for actual allergies and food intolerances. And I know some people do vegan due to like religious or ethical reasons, but at the end of the day, things like this are exclusion diets. And exclusion diets tend to cut out certain food groups from your diet. And that can be effective at first for so many reasons. Because no matter what you were eating, if you are excluding, like for instance, with a vegan diet, if you are excluding chicken, all poultry, all meat, all dairy, if you're excluding all these different options, you're left with fewer options. That coupled with the fact that if it's like eat as much fruit as you want, all that fruit is gonna load you up on fiber. All that fiber is gonna make you feel very full. And as a result of crossing a bunch of foods off the list and as a result of being very high in fiber, it's gonna make you feel very full. Will you lose weight? You might lose weight. And for some people, you could end up losing a good amount of weight the thing is, just because you are losing weight does not necessarily mean that your body composition is changing and that you're actually losing body fat. Now, you can effectively get smaller and smaller and smaller. In my opinion, I don't think it is the best approach. However, it is an approach to weight loss. I think it's a little imbalanced. However, if that is what you choose to do religiously or ethically, that is your choice and more power to you. Next question, are collagen peptides an appropriate source of protein after a workout? I'm guessing they are a complete protein, but I'm not sure, thank you. The answer is yes, collagen peptides are an appropriate source of protein. And for those of you who are trying to stay away from dairy or soy or gluten, these are an appropriate source that you can use in your daily regimen. Next question is how to stop a deprivation slash overeating cycle. This is a really big topic. And I think that for those of you who struggle with this, I urge you to focus on changing your behaviors because going on an extreme crash diet and say, I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna eat right, I'm gonna eat right. Like, and just going to one extreme is not good. And then conversely, going to the other extreme where it's like you get a case of the efforts and you're like, I'm just gonna eat everything. Both of those behaviors, it's the same behavior, it's just, you're projecting it in different ways. I think you need to develop a mindset of, this is gonna take time, I'm gonna do this slow and steady, and stop being in a rush. Stop being in this imaginary race with yourself 
because you're only going to hurt yourself. If you wanna like swing back and forth like this your whole life, be my guest, but the reality is that is just going to leave you in a not good mental place. I promote and suggest balance. I suggest moderate, sustainable changes that you can live with and depriving yourself is not gonna help and binging is not gonna help either. You need to find a place in the middle and just take a real deep breath and look in the mirror and just be like, all right, this is gonna take time. This is gonna take hard work. It, once you accept that it's not gonna happen overnight and you become content and satisfied and pleased with your efforts and you do that consistently with time, that's when you're gonna get real results. All right, so the question was, I take an insane amount of supplements and want to narrow down to the essentials. If you could only take three, which would they be? Side note, I work in the industry and every rep slash doctor slash formulator will say theirs is the best, it's hard to differentiate. I'm going to tell you which supplements I think are the best from the actual type and the ingredients they are made out of. I'm not going to showcase any brands or companies at this point. I do suggest a protein supplement that works for your body's tolerances. So if you're a vegan, maybe you would need like a pea type of protein. If you have allergens to gluten, soy, and dairy, maybe a collagen protein. If you are open to different things like a whey protein, I do suggest a protein supplement just for the convenience and price point alone, it's just such an easy way to get extra protein. So number one, I always suggest a protein supplement. Number two, I suggest a pre-workout supplement. They are excellent ergogenic aids. I'm not gonna promote a specific brand right now. But what I will say is that having an additional ergogenic aid, it makes a difference. It legit makes a difference with your training. And number three, there is one supplement that not a lot of people talk about, but I think is probably one of the best supplements you could take, and that is MSM. It stands for methyl sulfonyl methane. And what this does is this helps to build connective tissue and helps with your joints. The thing that a lot of people don't realize, everyone's like working out so hard and doing their CrossFit and slamming their weights and everyone's doing all this stuff to repair their muscle, but people are not doing anything to repair your joints. You gotta realize, you guys, your joints heal at like 5% of the rate that your muscles repair. If you're a runner, if you are someone like a power lifter, the damage that you're doing to your joints is legit and anything that you can do to help preserve and stimulate connective tissue in your joints. So MSM I really like. There are other ingredients that will help do the same thing like an MSM, methyl sulfonyl methane with like glucosamine chondroitin. Those types of ingredients are good. But again, those three things, again, I said protein, a pre-workout or an ergogenic aid to help boost your training and help with your gains. And then third, something for joint health. People neglect joint health like crazy and I definitely recommend something for that. All right, next question is, is it okay slash good to switch to carbs like rice or sweet potatoes for a bigger portion of carbs from vegetables? And what do you think of volume eating like eating a lot of salad? Thanks again. So I think that this is a perfectly acceptable approach and showing the type of flexibility that you can have with your macros because for instance I could have literally one and a half cups of spaghetti squash to half a cup of rice so if I want more volume on my plate and spaghetti squash is awesome they're nutritionally equivalent when it comes to carbohydrates but there's some people who don't want to eat a lot of volume of food but for those of you who struggle who legit struggle and you just cannot feel full on certain foods by all means switching from starchy carbs that are more dense and compact like rice and potatoes to vegetables like squash, things like that. They're gonna have a lot more volume like zoodles, spaghetti squash, acorn squash. There's like a million types of squash that are amazing. Go for it. It's a great idea and I suggest it. I do it myself. Next question is, Anyone who does a diet or lifestyle change has to go through a phase where their body adjusts. This phase is a sign of the change, but due to it, some people get scared, feel challenged, tend to give up instantly, or freak out that something went wrong with their bodies. Can you please give tips and advice on how to stay strong during this phase? I think that before you dig in and are about to make your change, in order to make that part easier on yourself, what you should do is give yourself two week warm up where, or even a month, it depends on your style. But anytime I'm about to like either like start a contest prep or prep for a photo shoot or something, I give myself like a two week warm up. And what I do during that like warm up time is I'm not exactly tracking or measuring during that time, but I will start gradually slowly changing things during that time. So for example, if you haven't been to the gym in forever, 
you have the gym membership but you're not using it, just during this two to four week warm up phase, just focus on getting your ass to the gym. <laughs> like even if you just get yourself there three to four times a week, just focus on changing your habits first. Don't even weigh yourself, don't even do any of that stuff, but just if you're getting yourself to the gym before and you weren't, that's progress. If you cut out alcohol during that time, that's progress. If you prep your meals, even if it's just leftovers from the night before and you didn't have your macros all perfectly figured out, that is still a lot better than going completely cold turkey to feeling like you're weighing and measuring and this and that and you're just like, oh crap. Let yourself ease into it and by being gentle with yourself for that first two to four weeks and then once you're like, okay, I'm good, now I'm ready to like really zero in commit, that will make that phase a lot easier and a lot of people just wanna to jump to it, they want their results and they don't wanna be patient with themselves. They don't wanna allow themselves that time to adjust because the reality is you didn't get to where you are overnight, it took time. Give yourself time to just ease into it. That's my suggestion, ease into it slowly. Gradually start to like minimize the obvious behaviors that you know are bad. If you're eating a bag of potato chips every night, you gotta stop that stuff. But it doesn't mean that you have to perfectly measure out and portion all your food at first. So just start making changes and then gradually once you're ready to, it will become more second nature. So the other thing, the other side of that is you're gonna have to be mentally strong. Like if there's things in your pantry that is a trigger food for you, for some of you, you may need to completely like keep that stuff out of your house. If you know yourself, you gotta know yourself. You gotta be honest with yourself about your strengths and your weaknesses and take it from there. So I hope this advice helps. This is gonna wrap up this video. I have so many other videos that I have to get up for you guys on like very technical content. So stay tuned, please subscribe to the channel and thank you for watching. Take care guys. Regardless of how much they eat, these are the people that a lot of us envy. <laughs> Cry me a river if you have a hard time gaining weight. Today we're talking about fat loss for the different body types. Mesomorphs, endomorphs, and ectomorphs.